Okay, let's go ahead and get started there, everybody. Welcome back to another 2 p.m. PST YouTube stream. I'm your host, Strange Bird Jim, and today we're going to be getting back into Pega. Um, so we got a, um, <laughs> most likely a pretty long um, session today in terms of uh, Pega, Unreal, uh, video uploads, and Genshin Impact later on tonight. So it's going to be... Well, it's going to be a long stream. Okay, so... Um, if you're watching this on stream, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Um, you know, feel free to chat with me at any time, as always. Or if you just want to lurk, that's perfectly fine, too. Um, in terms of, you know, if, if you're watching this later on YouTube, you know, if, you know, if you're watching these on the playlist or whatnot, or if this is the first very, uh, first video that you're watching concerning Pega, then I welcome you to that. There's a full playlist that I made for these, uh, Pega, uh, Pega videos. So you're welcome to go check that out. Okay. I try to do the... Uh, system architect mission in order so I'm already gone through a number of videos so if you're catching this one and you're like well wait I want the full mission as well you're welcome to go ahead and stop this and check out the playlist for um, the list in order so I mean you can go one after another and kind of follow me along on the 8.7 um not doing the 8.8 .8 or 23 right at this moment in time because one, there's no translations for either of them, uh, for any other language, just in case anybody wants to, you know, try to follow along uh, in another language. You know, maybe you can understand spoken English, but you can't readily read it. So that's perfectly fine. You know, we can we can work with that. Um. You know, I want to try to help out where I can, but um, just know that, you know, I only know one language myself. As much as I'd like to have learned a second language, I haven't taken the time to to do that. Well, I tried at one point, but I never got up to a conversational state. So, um, okay. Who am I? What are these videos about? Um, and... Um, you know, what should you really expect? Okay, so um, I am currently an unemployed software developer whose last job was concerning the Pega, Pega environment. So um, the um, I, I was not able to get my certification at the last job. Uh, they gave, and you know, the job that I had, they put us into a training with an authorized training partner that uh, the majority of us, like 99.9% .9 of the entire team that was trying to learn from the authorized training partner pretty much went um, um, self-study because we were having a really hard time with them. Um, even the guy's employees knew, so don't don't think that it was just on us okay then the you know his co-workers saw that he was messing up but instead of putting this back into another training session with another authorized training partner to hopefully help us get the certification better or you know teach us properly you know what pega was all about uh, we were basically forced into the contract so uh, when I took my certification for it, I was definitely not ready. I was already in self-study at that point, and I knew that I wasn't ready for it. But they said either, you know, you either have to take it now or you're going to have to walk. So I took it. I failed it, which was not a surprise. Um, I, I missed six questions to the minimum. But, I mean, still, that's not 
that's not something that I should be necessarily proud of either, okay? If I got the bare minimum, then, you know, what does that say about, you know, how how much I've learned, okay? Um, now, I will mention the fact that the certification, when I took it for 8.6, there was um, pick a seven questions in there, or at least pick a seven keywords in, in the certification exam, okay? So... It wasn't just straight 8.6, okay? They were using old questions in the certification exam. So be prepared when you take it yourself, okay? If you're taking it. So uh, be be aware, okay? Which, which should help you out anyway, okay? Because if you're learning uh, past keywords, then you're able to communicate with your, and with, um, um, you know, more experienced developers that are, you know, that have already been working with Pega for a number of years, okay? They might have gotten their certification in seven, but they haven't, you know, done a certification work on any of the later ones. So you might actually be needing to discuss, you know, things with, you know, a lead or a manager, and they might be using old keywords. So, you know, so it's, it's a good thing to know but at the same time, it was not taught to us. So, so that was that was an unfortunate um, that was an unfortunate oversight by the uh, by our authorized training partner. Okay, um, I'm not an authorized training partner. I'm not an instructor. So do not consider me as either one of those. Okay, both of these should be very experienced with Pega, and I am not. Um, and they should be able to answer your questions. Okay, and while I will do my best to answer your question, if you have any, whether it's in chat or in a comment, um, you know, know that, um, you know, if, if I can't answer it, I will see what I can do about trying to find someone that can. Okay, I do know a couple of my past co-workers that might be able to answer those questions. So don't be, um, don't be afraid to ask questions, okay? You know, even if I and my coworker might not be able to answer it, okay, that doesn't necessarily mean that the community itself might not be able to answer it either. Okay, I'm asking for the Pega community to kind of, kind of rally behind these videos and and help out others. You know, not just myself, because I have questions on these videos. You know, I'm asking these questions. I'm not quite understanding uh, some of the topics on it, so. You know, there's going to be times where I myself am going to be confused and I'm going to be asking questions during these videos. Okay, that's the reason why I'm making these videos. So that the Pega community itself can try to help me out a little bit. Okay. Um, so, um, but, you know, I expect the same in the comment section as well. Okay, everybody helping each other out on figuring out, you know, what... Um, you know, figuring out what the pig environment is all about and all the nuances in the environment. So, and, you know, it'd be nice to also get information about, you know, hey, is your knowledge, you know, Pega 7? Is your knowledge Pega 8.6? You know, whatever. Um, you know, just something to, uh, to help out. Okay. That's what the, that's why I'm recording these videos. That's why I'm uploading these videos so that, not only when I get some help, but I have others that could get help as well. If you want to try the instructor light training, then go ahead and do so. It's like a two-week course, but it's, you know, it's like a lot of information for the certification. It's also 5000 bucks, so, you know, get your money's worth out of it. Okay? Um... I need to be quick about it because uh, I need to be quick about this because the next topic is uh, going to be pretty rough. Uh, I've already completed Business Architect, so uh, if you want that, check out my old videos. Uh, these last two modules about the Pega Express, I recommend going over the mission because I don't feel that these two modules covered everything, and you're probably going to want more of this, seeing that it's 12% of your certification. Um, but we're going to continue on with the System Architect. 
Uh, the next topic is like 15 minutes long. It's a long one, so I don't really want to waste too much, uh, you know, I don't want to take, uh, take too much time on it. So data validation and dev studio. As you can see, it is a lot of information packed in this particular topic. So I got a lot to say and not much time to say it. Okay, so let's get into this. So uh, data validation and Dev Studio. In App Studio, you can configure validation conditions that perform a true false comparison to the value in one field against either a constant value or the value of another field. More complex validation scenarios might require additional uh, capabilities that are provided by valid, uh, validate rules in Dev Studio. Consider the following scenarios, each of which requires behavior that you can configure only in Dev Studio. When a Canadian customer submits their address, the postal code entry must conform to the standard format for Canadian postal codes. When an investor opens an investment account, they complete a questionnaire to determine their experience level. Only individuals with extensive investing experience can add margin trading to their account. When a person enrolls in a healthcare plan, the applicant must upload a constant, uh, consent form to allow disclosure of medical information to third parties. Why you want to have a consent form for third parties, I don't really know because that's your that's your personal medical information. I wouldn't really do that, but whatever. Um, we move on. Uh, validate rules. Uh, validate rules ensure that the data that your users provide meets the conditions that a case requires in order to go forward. By assigning validation rules to flow actions, you can prevent users from entering information that your application cannot process and reduce the number of processing errors. In Dev Studio, you can extend validate rules that are created equal, uh, automatically in App Studio. You can also create new validate rules in the process category. Um, so, like maybe, um, For a phone number, you don't want anyone putting in any alpha, uh, alphabet char uh, alphabet uh, alphabetic characters into the phone number, unless of course the phone number actually has alpha character uh, or alpha alphabetic characters. But more often than not, you know that's I haven't really heard of a need for that. But um. You know, I would, uh, I would imagine that, you know, hey, a validate rule, remove all alphabetic, uh, um, alphabetic characters from being entered, you know, so, or potentially, you know, I'm, I'm just speaking out loud here, um, as a, as a possibility that you could probably do if you want, if you wanted to. All right, we move on. Edit validate rules. So edit validate rules are typically applied to properties and consist of Java code that compares the value of a property to a defined pattern. For example, an edit validate rule can check whether a property value consists of seven numbers with a space separating the third or fourth numbers. If the pattern match succeeds, the input is considered valid. Otherwise, the system flags the input with an error. Because of the potential to introduce custom Java into the application, edit validate rules represent a potential security risk for your application. Yeah. Um. Edit validate rules are used for client side validation, which means that the value users enter is validated immediately without referencing the server. Validation occurs when users make a change to the entered value. To apply a edit validate rule to a property, 
Reference to edit value value rule on the events tab of the property rule form in the use validate field. You can also call an edit validate rule from a validate rule. When you call an edit validate rule from a validate rule, validation occurs when the system runs the validate rule, which occurs when the user submits the form. So use case, data format needs driven by business logic. Business logic might detect, dictate that users, uh, user input meets certain standards. For example, to capture contact information for a user, an organization needs to ensure that the information is valid before an application confirm that a postal code, email address, or telephone number are accurate for a user, the application must confirm that the user entry conforms to a specific format that might vary based on location. The following example demonstrates, uh, and demonstrates applying a edit validate rule from a validate rule to ensure that the user enters a postal code that conforms to the United States zip code format which requires a five numerical digits. Uh, well, technically, it's five plus four. You know, it's, you know, it's a, the five digit zip code, and then they add like, you know, four additional for a more specific location for the most part. So it's not just five numerical dig digits for the most part, but we move on. Um, so, um, you have validate for the postal code, enable conditions, validation of property name using edit validate name fails, uh, validation of postal code using US zip code fails. So, please enter a valid zip code. Um, no one in nowhere in here does it like clearly state um like a uh, five digit code um but maybe the us zip code there's you know something that automatically has like hey it has to be five digits so A data validation requirement confirmed that the submitted taxpayer identification number, 10, consists of exa uh, exactly nine digits, consists of exactly nine digits, can be configured in only Dev Studio. I believe that's true. So, yeah. Because you're 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 stating you you need exactly nine digits, so and you can't necessarily do that in App Studio. So and you, you can't do that in App Studio. So okay, use case validation qualification based on input value. Business logic might require that the application validates data differently based on certain conditions, such as user input, case status, or stage or user action. This can be accomplished with a validate rule. Consider the case type or, uh, for opening a new investment account. A financial services firm might offer the, uh, the option to trade securities on margin by lending funds to a customer to pr purchase stocks or allow investments. This lending, known as margin loan, requires the customer to maintain a certain ratio of loan balance to account value such as 30 percent the firm wants to ensure that customers use margin wisely and limit the need for a margin call a request to provide additional funds or selling an investment automatically to restore the ratio between loan balance and account value they're telling us a lot of stuff about the financial market that it's like okay well i mean i mean this is a lot of information being thrown at you but You might not necessarily need to, I mean, you you might not get a job in the financial services market, so 
you know. So don't, I wouldn't worry too much about the the main information contained in it. Uh, focus more on what you can kind of do to uh, make it work using the validate. You know, because wherever you're going to work at, you know, they're going to give you times where you're going to need to create a validate, you know, depending on, you know, what you need, you know, what, what the business is all about. So, so, you know, hey, if you're going into the financial, great. And if you're not, then I wouldn't really worry about this. But... Investors with extensive investing experience present a low risk for a, mar a margin call, while investors with limited experience present a much higher risk. In addition, accounts that limit contributions on a yearly basis, such as retirement accounts, prohibit margin trading altogether. To satisfy this requirement, you can conditionalize the validation logic based on the account type and experience level. Boy, they put a lot of information in there that I feel that they really didn't need to, but we move on. Uh, to qualify validation logic, use the input tab of the validate rule to identify the type of qualification to apply by selecting one of the M uh, one of the options. Um, so here's your input. You have none. You have input property. You have proposed work status. You have flow action name, and you have stages. So what is input property? Qualified validation based on data that is provided by the user. Uh, in the new investment account example, both the experience level and account type fields are used to specialize the validation logic. Um, proposed work status, qualified validation based on status that the application applies for the case. For example, a request for a credit card is based in part on a customer credit score. For the pending qualification status, the credit score can be as low as 600, while changing the status to approved requires a minimum credit score of 725. So, um, Are they referencing the opinion and qualification? That doesn't really make much sense, but eh, well, we move on. Uh, flow action. Qualify validation based on the action that is performed by the user. Based on the action performed by the user not based on the data provided by the user. So, for example, a form containing employee information requires a start date of employment. If the user wants to run onboarding for a new employee, the start date must be in the future. If the user wants to perform an annual review for an employee, the start date must be in the past. But that isn't necessarily an action though I mean that's still based on data that is provided by the user based off um, unless of course it's kind of focused on hey you want to check to see if you need to run onboarding or not you know um, <laughs> Like it, it checks the the employee start date and checks to see whether or not they need to do an onboarding or an annual review. Onboarding and an annual, annual annual review might be the flow option that they're talking about there. So, um, yeah. like the start date might might already like be in the system. So the the employee might be like going, okay, 
uh, do I need to do an onboarding or an annual review for this particular employee? You know, I'm going to pick a random name out of the employee database. Do I need to do an onboarding or do I need to do an annual review? Checks the start date and goes, oh, yeah, you need to do an annual review or something, you know. So, whatever. All right, stages. Qualify validation based on the current stage of the case. Uh, for example, to apply for a mortgage or home equity loan, the customer must indicate their annual income. During the submission stage, the application requires the user to provide an esti uh, estimated income. During the approval stage, the estimate must be replaced with a confirmed concrete value. So. Uh, input qualified validation based on the stage of case can be configured in App Studio as a stage entry validation. And the other input qualification validation options can be configured only in Dev Studio. The following examples demonstrates input qualified validation. The value that is selected in the experience level list determines the validation condition that is applied when you submit the form. If the user selects experienced or professional, the margin trading is allowed and the checkbox to enable margin trading is not validated. If the user selects limited, an error is displayed if the user checks the box to enable margin, uh, margin trading. Well, I mean, if, if the user selects limited, then you should basically disable the checkbox, right? You shouldn't necessarily need to have the checkbox um, you know you shouldn't necessarily need the checkbox uh, available at that point so but we move on in the center of the following image slide the vertical line to view the configuration of the input qualified validation and the result so input qualified validation configuration so um so you have experience level precondition property enable margin trading um limited uh if enable margin trading is equal to true then display message insufficient investment experience um And then over here, you have the input qualified validation results. So um, account options, experience level limited, enable margin trading, you like sufficient investing experience to qualify for margin training. So, you know, as soon as you select limited, it should uncheck the enable margin training and disable it, you know, automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about it, you know. So, just saying. So. Uh, you can qualify validation for a property based on the action performed by the user. Mm, right. Should be possible. Yeah. So, yes, that's, you know, the, um, that's the flow action. Okay, use case, additional operations for comparison. App Studio supports true-false comparisons between two property values or a property value and a constant. In cases where you cannot configure this type of comparison, you can access a library of validation functions on the validate rule form in Dev Studio. For example, you can use a function to check whether a date falls within the past four or eight weeks uh, or to check whether a user has uploaded a specific type of attachment to the case. 
Each function presents a customized set of fields for configuring validation behavior. The following example demonstrates the use of a function to configure validation. To validate rule, the validate rule uses the function a attachment category is attached, not attached to the current case to ensure that the user attaches a document that demonstrates proof of his identity as part of the process for onboarding a new employee. In the center of the following image, slide the vertical line to configure the configuration of the attachment validation and the result. So uh, over here you have the validate identi uh, identity document, uh, enable conditions, uh, select the function and attachment category is attached, not attached to the current case. If a identity, uh, identity verification document is not attached to the current case, then you add the message, please attach a document. Um, and then you continue the validation afterwards. Um, you would think that if um, yeah, I mean, if you absolutely need it, you would think that you would have like the required <coughs> enabled here. So um, so you know, they have to add the um, the the document that you need, right? You know, otherwise it, you know, will just kind of, um, yeah, but we move on. Um, identify a document provided, uh, eligibility document provided, um, So, um, now, I mean, with the required, you know, I, w I would figure that the submit button wouldn't allow for continuation you would you'd basically be stuck on that particular screen until um you've put in the you know the document in question and then you can kind of move on but because this wasn't necessarily uh selected there then this message right here is you know sure they might see it but they might not care about it they can kind of move on it and uh, move on so you know, you can do all these messages as much as you want to on there, but if it's not required, then they, you know, they might be able to hit submit and move on from it. So, so just saying, um, you know, bear that in mind. Check your knowledge with the following interaction. Functions provide a set of parameters to configure validation behavior. Um, I don't think you, I don't, I don't know if that's true. No, no, I guess not. Where is that? Each function presents a customized set of fields for configuration validating field. It's not exactly the same there, guys. Not does exactly the same kind of language on that.
but I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna call them out on this because uh, functions provide a set of parameters. No, no, they provide sets of fields that can be customized. Sure, that's that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly reasonable. You know, that's that's what the the functions are all about. Parameters are not necessarily fields. So, um, I don't see this statement here does not necessarily equal the same statement there. Just saying. Because a customized set of fields does not equal a set of parameters. That's um, I'm, I'm going to say no. I, I don't agree with that one at all. So, um, One second. I want to save the image on here. <sighs> Post that in there. Let me get the picture in there. So I have a problem with the uh, question at the end of the topic shown in the attached image. Um, it says um presents a set of parameters however i feel that isn't the same as the statement above given here. A customized set of fields Um, is not the same as a set of parameters. A set of parameters sounds like uh, values that are predefined which isn't the same as a customized set of fields
would recommend a rewrite of the question itself. That's what I that's what I feel. Do you agree with me? Is, does anybody agree with me on this one? If you don't, then you're welcome to kind of, you know, tell me where like right now in the chat or, you know, in the comments for the video later. But um, I feel as though this right here is not a set of parameters. That's not a that it's not a set of parameters. Um, here, let me let me um, programming parameters. Um, a parameter is a special kind of variable used in a function to refer to one of the pieces of data provided as input to the function. Yeah, the, the parameters in a function, yeah, that's, or, you know, in a method declaration, right. Um, so, that, um, let me let me try to explain this this way really quickly because we are running out of time here. Um, so, when you, when you call a method, right, you can call it with, you know, certain, um, information with contained within the brackets um you know say like you want to pass in like an int or a string or something like that those are you know what's called parameters going into um into the function right um but here's the thing um the the function here okay um is a little bit more complex than than what you know they're just saying the set of parameters no there's there's more to it than than just that so you know yeah you have you have multiple sets of fields that are handling the the overall function in this it does it's doing more than just a set of parameters you know, this would be true if we're just talking about like um, a, like a Java function or something along a Java method, I should say. Um, you know, you're 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 passing in parameters into the method, it you know, and then the method handles whatever's inside of it. Okay, um, but. You know, this is this is more than that. This is like the full method. Okay, not only does it is it taking in parameters, but it's also checking those parameters to see whether or not it's actually true or not. So that's why I'm I'm saying this isn't. You know, those two statements aren't necessarily the same. Okay, if I'm wrong, if you feel like I'm wrong, then you're welcome to counter me on that. You know. And explain. Um, you know, I appreciate if you did. You know, I I welcome constructive criticism, there, folks. So you're welcome to um, to counter me on this. But um, I don't feel like that's that's a good. You know, the statement here and the statement there are not the same, in, in my particular opinion, right at this moment in time. Now, if someone brings up a good point, 
and tells me no that you know this is how you need to see it and and all that then great you know you can you can you know feel free to counter me on that um you know uh if it if it's a well articulated counterpoint then i will concede okay but you know right now i don't really see the similarities right at this moment right, right at this moment in time okay so um we actually got finished a little early so that's that's good um but i'm not gonna move on to the next um topic here i only got like about 12 more minutes here so um Oh, is this another one of those um, modifying a, a challenge? Seems that way. And they really shouldn't make this into its own challenge and not not putting it in, in here. So. Um, what about this one? Defining the entrance criteria for a stage. This is another one that... Um... Okay, hold on. Okay, well, there is the the challenge next. Uh, I don't, I mean, with two tasks here. Um, I don't know if they're going over the last two topics that they wanted you to kind of go over. I'm confused why you don't just put these kind of scenarios into a challenge itself. And um, another task, and just put the steps in there. in
Um, did they just not work with the next challenge in some way? Okay, we're going to do that for this one, and then the next topic as well. But yeah, it's just like, why, why bother, you know, You know, you're you're making this as a like a separate topic. Well, I mean, you could you can add this as a as their own. You know, you can put this into the next challenge. Why not do that? I mean, you're talking about you know, uh, you know, going step by step through a process of modifying. Um, you know, modifying fields. You know, creating validations and stuff like that. It's like, well have them go through those steps and the challenge why are you i mean i i would have to go into the challenge start up a an instance and then go through these steps themselves this is making even more time for the challenge as well so you know i'm gonna have to remind myself that hey you know um the you know the previous two topics you know um you know validating field input and defining the entrance criteria for a stage you know um you know both of those are pretty much um examples for the challenge itself so um, let's see, let me, let me make a quick note, um, uh, on this. Hopefully I'll remember to do this for the challenge itself, but, um, uh, should be done within the next challenge okay so for anybody that is uh, maybe watching me right on stream uh, at this particular moment in time please try to remind me that I need to do these tomorrow uh, that would, you know that would be a great help uh, okay three questions let's, let's see if we can answer the, the questions here so Case type allows customers to specify paint color and finish for painting and cost estimate, which configuration prevents users from entering an invalid combination of colors and finishes on a form. Configure and edit validate rule to test the combination of color finish. Create a validate rule to test the combination of color finish. Create pick list? No. Create a decision rule? No. So it's either the first two. Um, No. Validated rules are evaluated and an assignment is submitted allowing the user to enter an invalid accommodation. Okay, so it has to be the edit validate rule. Gotcha. Uh, which of the requirement must you configure to validate, uh, configure validate rule in Dev Studio? Uh, Timesheets submitted by a consultant assigned to the client project must be reviewed by an auditor I don't see that as a necessary. The amount of transfer between accounts must be greater than zero or less than the available balance for the originating account. Eh, maybe. The value of the data service field must be no more than 15 days for the criteria issue and up to 60 days for the future for an issue with a lower pr priority. Hmm. 
that might actually be a better one. An email address is required for a case to enter the approval stage. Hmm. A lot of these feel like um, okay, these might be a val edit validate rule. So, so I think this one is the correct one. Nope, apparently not. Okay. Um, we move on. I'm not really doing very well on this. <laughs> You need to add a field for banking running number to a view. The banking running number must consist of only numbers 0 through 9, including any deleting zeros, which configuration option ensures that the user submit a valid banking running number. Configure validate rule to call an added validate rule to add deleting zeros or to any entry that contains fewer than nine digits. Configure validate rule to check whether the user input consists of only the numbers. 0 through 9, configure a valid rule to check whether the user input is 9 characters long. Um, um, configure a valid rule to call and uh, check whether the user input consists of only the numbers 0 through 9. I mean, you don't want to do that one because that, um, because that would modify their bank account. Um, It's either this one or this one. I think it. Once again, I'm I'm messing up on these questions, man. All right. Well, I gotta switch on. Oh, well, okay. I think I might need to review this tomorrow. I guess I didn't really get the topic very well. We'll have to cover this a little bit more on um, tomorrow because I feel like um, maybe I'm just not getting the information like locked in my brain. So, but I got to move on to the Unreal Engine. So that's where we're going to go ahead and end it for today. So I want to thank everybody for joining me on this. Um, we're going to continue this tomorrow. Um, hopefully you'll catch me, you know, more on this more, you know, as well. Feel free to make any comments or suggestions. Um, hopefully you'll continue to join me in this journey. And yeah, that's where we're going to go and end this video. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully I catch you next time. Till then, take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll catch you strangers next time.